inspiring. Over the years that I've been involved with this event, if you ask me to describe it with one word, I would say inspiring. Each year I come away inspired to see what other members of our community are doing to make this a better place to live. It is inspiring to see how many people are out there volunteering to beautify our town and to offer programs which improve our quality of life. Inspiring to see business people in the community going above and beyond to better serve their customers. This is an evening of celebration. We do this to celebrate the accomplishments of people right here in our community. We draw inspiration from this celebration. It is encouraging to know that we have so many remarkable people living right here. This past year has been a different one than we've seen before. But it is even more reason to hold this event, even though it has to be done virtually. We have reason to celebrate because a lot of extraordinary people in this community have once again risen to the task. COVID-19 has been and continues to be a pandemic that has disrupted the business community and has disrupted many of the programs that we rely on to bring us joy and benefit our mental health. Tonight, we celebrate those who have persevered through innovation and tenacity. We will celebrate those who have gone out of their way to make life better for others. Because of the special people we are fortunate to have living here, we go forward stronger than we have ever been. I want to start the evening by taking the time to congratulate all of the nominees. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your hard work and your contributions to our community. Be it in the way that you run your business, your volunteerism, or whatever endeavor it is that led to your nomination. I want to thank you for making this community a better place. I also want to thank everyone that took the time to go to Concordia Community Chamber of Commerce website to nominate somebody. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Thompson and as your member of Provincial Parliament, I would like to sincerely thank the Concordia Chamber of Commerce for taking time this year to recognize and to thank the businesses throughout the community. This has been an unprecedented year and never before has it been more important to recognize the engine of the community. And that engine is all of the small businesses that have proven to be flexible and adaptable as we've navigated these pandemic waters. This year has been truly incredible in terms of the community spirit, as well as the reaction to support each other. To move forward, we must protect, support, and recover. And with recognition programs like the Concordia Chamber of Commerce is hosting it tonight, I think we can show our sincere appreciation for everyone that is making a difference. And thank you to all of our small businesses. You provide jobs and you truly are the engine of our local economy. Hi, I'm Ben Law, Member of Parliament for Huron Bruce. I'd like to congratulate and thank all the board members and volunteers for the King Carden and District Chamber of Commerce and your hard work for this evening's event, the Community Achievement Awards. I'd like to also recognize all the businesses in the King Carden area who have been nominated tonight for these prestigious awards. Congratulations. Congratulate all the nominees and even those that maybe haven't been nominated. Everyone deserves an award this year getting through COVID-19. We look forward to everything that everyone has to offer in the remaining year and the years to come. I'm Brian Lepold with EPCOR. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity to uh, provide our deepest thanks to the community and in addition to congratulate the winner of this year's Concordia District Community Achievement Awards. Uh, this project for EPCOR has been an exciting one and we're thrilled to be a community partner. Um, despite all the challenges of this year, it has been a good one for EPCOR. We uh, continue to install services in the local area and this wouldn't be possible without the um, efforts and tenacity of the local governments, the provincial government, and of course partners like the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, EPCOR has a long history of uh, being part of the community and we look to continue um, our support for local businesses, local charities and initiatives. In fact we've uh, put up a brick and mortar building uh, at the corner of 
number 10 and here on Kinloss Road. So that's an indication we're here to stay. So we're looking forward to serving the community and uh, fulfilling the promise of clean, affordable natural gas in the community area. We certainly look forward to 2021 as we continue to develop the project. I'd also like to thank local businesses, businesses such as the Bruce, uh, Seven Acres, uh, Glo uh, Greenfield Global, and Snowbelden Farms, who are already being served with gas at this moment. And without them, this wouldn't be possible. On behalf of EPCOR, I would like to thank the winners of this year's Chamber of Commerce um, Community Achievement Awards. The Enbridge Quality of Life Award nominees for the 2020 Kincardine District Chamber of Commerce Achievement Awards are the Kincardine Food Bank. In 1991, the food bank began with the Anglican Church minister's wife, who was concerned with the number of people visiting the church needing help. The food bank began with just three volunteers and serviced a mere 14 local families. In 2008, Nancy Dawson and Pat Stewart took over running the Kincardine Food Bank. In that year, 1,423 people came through. In 2019, 2,475 people visited the Kincardine Food Bank, and they have approximately 30 volunteers. A visit could be comprised of an entire family or one person. When there is adequate support, they add ground beef to their list of available items, their eggs are sourced directly from the marketing board, and during summer months, the food bank is able to take donations from local gardens to ensure that fresh produce is available. The Good Food Box donates monthly and numerous local businesses step up to support. Sleeper's Bed Gallery does their annual fill a truck and Confirmed Tire also does fill a tire. While talking to Pat, she told me that she had just received a donation from Chris Napier of Sobeys, win another winner of this year's awards for $6,000. Pat was clear that the generosity from the Kincardine community is truly impressive. It bears mentioning that the Kincardine Food Bank has seen an uptick in the frequency of visitors from seniors, that their CPP and other income is no longer enough to get them by in our area where the cost of living is high. The Kincardine Food Bank supports people at a very emotional and vulnerable time wherein it is often hard for them to reach out and ask for help. By offering consistent support and quality food and not just sharing the scraps but the best that they have available, this respectful and consistent transaction is an integral part of our community well-being and we are so lucky to have such a dedicated group of volunteers to provide this service. Our second nominee for the Enbridge Quality of Life Award is Penetangier. Daryl Perry and his wife Teresa have had an incredibly interesting pathway to Penetangier. Daryl began his work in retail and has a degree in marketing and international trade. His wife, Teresa, is a particle physicist. Daryl spent 16 years working in high-level Fortune 500 companies on two continents before coming here. Having done his time in a fast-paced corporate level for Cadbury and Lint, to name a few, he decided to move back to Toronto and they began camping in the Gray and Bruce area. With slightly older children and seeing how beautiful and statistically attractive Kincardine is for businesses, they decided to settle and opened Penetangier in May of 2014. Daryl and Teresa believe that retail is a great starting position for young employees and instills an important work ethic that is held of close importance to them personally. They have a love for entrepreneurship and rapport building and they set off with the specific goal of embedding themselves into a small community. And it is clear that they have succeeded. Penetangier is now the number one supplier of swimwear to the surrounding swim clubs. They sponsor aquafit classes every winter for two weeks at the municipality of Kincardine. They offer tremendous customer service and are exceptionally passionate about keeping people healthy and dressed for success outdoors. It's this passion that stands out, actively demonstrates their commitment to the well-being of our community. They're an integral part of the annual Kincardin Fam Fest event, as well as co-sponsors of Yoga Fest, which draws numerous people out in conjunction with Shakti Rhythm Yoga to celebrate the awareness of outdoor spaces that are free for all of us to enjoy. With a passion for history and community connection, Penetangier created a barbecue fundraiser for the local legion. They've also partnered with Best Friends Bakery and have engaged with our local long-term care facilities to act as secret Santas every year, giving gift parcels to those seniors who otherwise would have no visitors over the holidays.
Penetangier is an outstanding example of a business who improves actively the quality of life for those of us in Kincardine. NPX is a Canadian startup with a refreshing view on innovation. They integrate the latest emerging technology into nuclear plant operations, projects, and processes. NPX believes in nuclear energy, and they're doing their part to make it sustainable for decades to come. They work directly with nuclear utilities to identify challenges and implement innovative solutions. Since 2018, they have grown from four co-founders to a staff of over 60 here in Kincardine. NPX is committed to bringing innovation to everything that they do, and this includes the way that they work, hire, and give back to our community. On a local level, NPX supports numerous local charities, provides support and resources to STEM program, hosts their own community engagement events, and during the COVID-19 pandemic, they supported the local community by printing 3D PPE face shields and giving them to frontline workers and businesses. They also ran an online coding academy for local students and taught close to 2,000 kids how to code. They created the Grey Bruce Huron Strong initiative to support local businesses during the pandemic, which included a gift card store and charitable events. NPX has created and sold end races and placards, with any proceeds going to Women in Motion, a Toronto-based charity. It is clear that NPX is here to stay and that their commitment to improving the quality of life for those of us in Kincardine will be ongoing. Uh, good evening. My name is Usman Batty. I am the plant manager of Enbridge's Ontario Wind Farm, located just north of Kincardine. I'm happy to be participating in this year's Community Achievement Event. I first want to say thank you to the Chamber for the invitation and all the great work that they do. Enbridge is a proud partner in Kincardine and its surrounding area. Over our years of operation here, we have worked with many excellent community-driven initiatives that have made and continue to make significant contributions to our local environment, safety, and social fabric of Kincardine. We look forward to many more years of working together. The award I'm here to present goes to a business, nonprofit, or community organization for outstanding contribution to the quality of life of those in our community. Congratulations to the winner, and thank you for all the important work that you do. The 2020 Enbridge Quality of Life Award is presented to the Kincardine Food Bank. On behalf of the Food Bank, we are pleased and humbled to accept this Quality of Life Award. We are fortunate that the Church of Messiah donates the use of this hall. This allows us to use all monetary donations for our needs. This does not always mean food, as we purchase pit toilet paper, hygiene products, toothpaste, etc. Not all clients using the Food Bank are on social assistance. We have low-income families, as well as seasonal workers and part-time workers. Of concern is the growing number of seniors using our facility. Clients are asked to use the food bank once a month, but no one is ever turned away if they need to use the bank more often. We provide individual schools with what is known as grub tubs. In September, the tubs are filled with such items as drink boxes, cheese and crackers, fruit cups, and granola bars. When a teacher sees a student in need, the grub tub comes into use. We refill these tubs regularly. Periodically, we are asked to help families from the women's house. Our dedicated volunteers help with sorting, checking dates, pickups, lifting, and stocking shelves. COVID, had a, COVID has added extra chores. They take everyone's temperature on arrival and provide masks as necessary. They disinfect all chairs, tables, and anything touched after each use. Without our volunteers, we would not be able to run as efficiently as we do. When our supplies run low, we use our monetary donations to purchase what is needed. We rely solely on donations. Without our generous community, we would not be able to operate. Again, thank you for recognizing the food bank and the work that we do. The RBC Golden Apple Award. Our three nominees are Crystal Young. Crystal had always wanted to be a teacher from a very young age. She would bring lesson plans and supplies to her teachers since grade two. In university, she chose a different path, but after 10 years in the workforce, she felt the call again and applied to Teachers College. 
As the application deadline had passed, Crystal had to be placed on a waiting list. Two days before school, she received word that she was accepted. So she returned to school while raising a young daughter. At convocation, the Director of Education approached Crystal and told her that after reading her letter of application and seeing her passion for teaching, she just knew that she had to accept Crystal. Crystal has had the opportunity of teaching at St. Anthony's here in her hometown of Kincardine for the past six years now. She feels fortunate to have had the challenge of teaching a different grade in each year. Although many people of many different professions found challenges and struggles caused by COVID, Crystal saw it as a way to put her philosophies into practice. She has focused her program largely on 21st century learning skills, innovation and design thinking challenges. In order to keep her students engaged, she hosted fun Google Meets, virtual field trips, a virtual camp out, as well as game days and spirit days. She has carried this model forward into the classroom and feels now is the time to get creative and do things differently. There is no doubt that there are many challenges presented in this new modified learning environment, but Crystal feels fortunate to be a part of history in the making and to evolve the educational system. Samantha Pitt. Samantha has always enjoyed working with children. In high school, she did co-op placements in schools and volunteered right here in Kincardine at Elgin Market School and at Ripley School. From an early age, relationships with children and helping them to grow is what drove her into the world of education. Samantha had actually started out to be a speech pathologist with the hopes of working in schools with children. When her husband Daniel decided to move overseas to England for his teaching degree, she went with him to do the same with the hopes that a teaching degree would only help her to get into schools as a speech pathologist. 24 years later, she's still there. She has worked at St. Anthony's in Concordia, St. Teresa in Walkerton, Holy Family in Hanover, and many other schools in the Bruce Gray Catholic School Board. At, she's been either an instructional coach or an instructional leadership consultant. She then became vice principal at St. Anthony's School in 2018, and more recently has become principal in January 2020. Her academic learning journey has taken a turn towards self-regulation and supporting well-being and mental health. When students feel safe and supported at school and have a relationship with their teachers and other adults in the building, they thrive. She believes in being an advocate for equity, mental health and wellness. As a school principal, she strives to model self-care, faith and openness to learning. As for the pandemic, Samantha truly believes with the support of Dr. Ara and our local health and leaders at Bruce Gray Catholic District School Board and Coterminous Blue Water District School Board, we will continue to do their best supporting students and families in Kincardine. They continue to follow protocol, listen to those who are struggling and encourage others to reach out and be the support they need to move forward. These unprecedented times, however, she knows and believes that our community is one of the most supportive and collaborative around and feels truly blessed to have been considered for this award. Katie Van Veen. Katie is the KDSS arts teacher and a former graduate. Her teaching philosophy is that arts are a set of skills that can be taught. Being drawn to the arts herself and seeing the joy that it can instill in others makes it a passion that she is eager to share. Katie's leadership and continued innovation have helped to create a wonderful and supportive environment for her local students to grow up in. Katie started her own post-secondary education at the Cambridge College of Arts in England. She then returned to Canada to earn an undergrad from the University of Guelph and a Bachelor of Education from the University of Toronto. She began teaching in Pickering in 1994. Katie has led seven high school trips to Europe with the Arts History Group. This has provided the students a chance to see the work of the masters and a life-changing experience. Katie keeps in contact with many alumni and brings them back to talk to current students. This has proved to be a great motivator for everyone. Many of Katie's students have gone on to professional careers in the arts industry, including universities and the Stratford Festival. Katie has traditionally had an annual spring art show that showcases the work of the current students. This is a well-attended event and a source of pride for the students. The current coronavirus pandemic has presented new challenges which Katie has rose to. A major part of the graduating class is to do a large canvas painting. Katie met with the students social distancing in their backyards to give instructions and motivate them to keep expressing themselves. This commitment to student success and well-being demonstrates how genuine her dedication to the student community is. 
Hello everyone, my name is Deanna Martin and I am the manager of the Royal Bank here in Kincardine. I have been a member of this community for 17 years and I'm so incredibly proud to be presenting sponsor for this award. The recipient of this award has demonstrated an exceptional commitment to student learning and is an inspiration to other educators and his or her students. Educators are shaping this community's futures. To quote an unknown author, teaching is the one profession that creates all other professions. I truly admire our teachers' dedication and perseverance during these unprecedented times. For myself, from myself and all of RBC, I'd like to personally thank you for everything that you do for your students and the community. The RBC Golden Apple recognizes high standards of professionalism, leadership, and innovation in education. The 2020 RBC Apple Award goes to Katie Van Bean. Thank you very much to the King Carden and District Chamber of Commerce, to RBC, and to my nominators for this award. I'm very honored to accept it. I am that rare person who knew what I wanted to do from a young age. My mother was a teacher, so I grew up listening to teachers talking about education, students, and schools. I decided at 15 that I wanted to teach art and French at high school. Guess what I'm doing now? There were some bumps along my path. It was not an easy ride. I came into teaching at a time when it was very difficult to get a job. I taught quite a few other subjects in a few different schools before I landed at KDSS why I've been lucky enough to teach for the last 23 years. I would not have survived this journey without the love and support of my family, especially my husband, Tom. So thank you to my whole family. Whenever anybody says, how can you teach teenagers? I respond with the honest truth. I love my job. I love that moment when the light goes on and a student gets it. And I love when grads come back to tell me what they are doing now, everything from graphic design to animation to restoring old paintings. I even have one former drama student who's become a successful working actor. It's been my great joy to share my passion for the arts with so many students over the last 23 years. Teachers learn from each other, and I want to honor my mentor and very dear friend, Carol Johnstone. From her, I've learned so much about how to be an effective teacher and how to travel the world with teenagers, no less. I am blessed to have worked with many other excellent educators over the years, and I share this award with all of the teachers who continue to work quietly in their classrooms, changing lives. Thank you. The Bank of Montreal Woman of Distinction Award top three nominees include Megan Fair, who moved from the Dundalk area 13 years ago to Kincardine. After working several contract positions with companies involved in the Bruce Restart, Megan and her friends decided to start their own company called NPX. NPX Innovation offers nuclear engineering, data science, and analytics and innovative project management services. They believe in the benefits of clean nuclear energy and are aiming to do their part in making it a sustainable and affordable long term. Megan is involved in fundraising for the Huron Shores Hospice, which has hit record fundraising numbers under the rebranding Hope for Hospice. She created the Facebook page, Kincardin Strong, a community support page during COVID to serve as a much used community resource. Megan has also created a GoFundMe for the individual who tragically lost his life at the Kincardine Pier this summer while trying to save his cousins who were swept into the lake by heavy waves. She's a Lions Club member, has worked on our boardwalk committee, the Davidson Center Skate Park expansion, and as KTTPS Home and School President, Megan raised over $100,000 for the playground equipment. Always encouraged by her family to give back to community, Megan has made her passion for giving back her life work. Her successful business venture has become an incredible vehicle through which she can affect change in our community. Janice Matchett is our second nominee for the Bank of Montreal Woman of Distinction Award. After graduating high school, Janice began working for the Royal Bank of Canada. 
After attending a seminar about financial planning, she left the Royal Bank and began working for Regal Capital Planners. Janice took then a huge leap of faith with her husband Rob to build Matchett Financial Services after 15 years of working there. With young children at home, Janice worked tirelessly to get her business off the ground. In 1990, that office building where she is today was purchased. Janice and her team saw clients by day and worked at night to make improvements to the building after hours. The individuals that became clients then are still clients, and after a couple of years, Matchup Financial had referrals to them, with thanks to their client base being pleased with their service. 30 years later, Janice is still in the same building and the client list has grown significantly. Leading her staff with care and utmost respect, they all work together to provide top quality service to their clients. Education training is always on the agenda for staff to keep up to date with financial industry and government programs. Investments they used have dramatically protected client assets due to active stock picking and taking advantage of market volatility. So the portfolio managers have also responded to the COVID pandemic and adapted portfolios based on market movement. Janice has taken every opportunity to give back to the community in which she lives. She supports Big Brothers, Blue Sh Bruce Shrine Club, Community Living, Huron Hospice, the Bulldogs, Kincardine Pride, the Food Bank, the Curling Club, and many, many more. Justifiably, Janice's business has been recognized as one of the top financial firms in Canada, and she has been featured in a variety of publications for her exemplary achievements. Janice Matchett is a woman who has set out to achieve her goals with steadfast determination and provides our community with financial services that are trusted and reliable. Diane Williams is an incredible example of a woman in trades. Diane recalls back in the early 90s serving lunch to some coveralled women. To her surprise, she learned they were not gardening over at the Bruce Power Plant, but they were a crane operator, an electrician, and a pipe fitter. Diane credits that moment to her registering for a Women in Trades and Technology course through Unemployment Services. She quickly realized that she didn't want to stand at a lathe or weld all day and discovered what a millwright was, and then things clicked for her. She applied to the Sarnia Millwrights Union and started her first contract job and apprenticeship in 1995. Diane took trade schooling at George Brown and received her Certificate of Qualification as a licensed construction millwright. In late 2006, she was working as a contractor at the Bruce Power Plant and was approached by PWU workers to apply for an opening as a me mechanical maintainer. This is now Diane's career and it has afforded her some incredible opportunities to share her passion with the trades with other young women. She's worked in Women in Nuclear Events, sponsored by Skilled Trades and Ontario Youth Apprenticeship. This initiative is there to encourage women to com complete math and science classes during high school in order to qualify for later trades positions. Diane has volunteered her time in local high schools, camps, and in events to teach welding skills. The Launchpad Youth and Tech Centre created an all-female welding program, and Diane is there as an instructor. Diane has brought a unique perspective, having struggled with undiagnosed ADHD through high school. She worked diligently as a role model and to encourage young women to join the trades and not give up on themselves. Not only has she achieved her own goals, but she is committing her time to ensuring that other women achieve theirs. Hi, my name is Rebecca Everett. I'm the branch manager of the Bank of Montreal in Kincardine. BMO proudly sponsors the Woman of Distinction Award. The award honors a local woman who through her initiative, ability and efforts has made an exemplary achievement in her field and is an outstanding role model because of her goals and the way she has achieved her goals. The 2020 BMO Woman of Distinction Award is presented to Janice Matchett. Hello everyone. First of all, I wanna thank the Chamber for this wonderful award. It comes with great pride that for women to receive an award like this and to be recognized in our community, uh, it's very much appreciated. I've been working for 33 years at my business and I'm blessed to have a wonderful group of, of a team that I work with, ladies and men, and uh, without their help, I wouldn't be where I am today. It is a team effort and I, I certainly recognize that on a day-to-day -day basis. Without their help and the ongoing uh, work that we do, uh, I would not be able to help, with, help my community sponsor many events and help those in need when time comes. And de definitely with this year with COVID, it has been extremely difficult for a lot of our um, nonprofit organizations. They really need our support 
and those of us that step up to help that help them, then that's really what it, what it means to me. Um, also, I've got to say a big thank you to our clients. Your trust and confidence over the years in enabling my office to manage your, uh, your wealth and many other things is, is deeply appreciated. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do here at the office at Matchett Financial. So I want to give a big thank you to everyone, the Chamber of Commerce, my staff, and all my clients for allowing us to do what we do and help every day. Thank you. The nominees for the OPG Environmental Award include Ducks Unlimited. Bruce County Ducks Unlimited started in 2019 to help conserve our wetlands. Although the plans for 2020 are on hold due to COVID, they held a sellout banquet that brought many businesses of the community together to share a common goal of preserving wetlands for our future. This organization is not just about hunting. Before the pandemic, Bruce County Ducks Unlimited, which operates out of Kincardine, planned to put up nest boxes for wood ducks, a beautiful and common bird in the area. Last year's banquet raised $15,000 and when the pandemic's over, they hope to continue their efforts to raise more. Eden Babbitt. Eden Babbitt has always enjoyed being outdoors. She was enrolled at the last forest school for three years and completed her environmental stewardship program as well as leadership training. At last forest school, focuses on environmental science, teaching kids life skills through outdoor exploration. After a Dr. Jane Goodall visit, which inspired Eden to a vegetarian diet, she began thinking about more ways she could do her part to save the planet and realized this involved contributing monetarily to environmental initiatives. She created Eden for the Environment on Instagram, where she takes recycled materials and creates new things for sale. The money she raises is donated to Jane Goodall Institute of Canada. After making this connection, Eden was invited to go see the premiere of the movie She Walks with Apes. There she connected with one of the featured activists in the movie, a primatology professor in Montreal and a successor of Jane Goodall. This galvanized Eden's passion for the environmental activism and desire to conserve, preserve and improve our environment. At the Rally for Climate Change in Kincardine in September 2019, Eden was a keynote speaker. Eden has made huge strides given her age, connecting and engaging with actions and leaders who are aligned with her goals. We are excited to see how this young individual continues to develop. Amanda Saxton. Amanda is a school teacher and member of the Municipality of Kincardine's Environmental Committee. It was through this committee she was an integral part of getting their recent rain barrel sale into fruition. Amanda coordinates the TerraCycle program in Kincardine, which is a waste diversion program keeping these plastics out of the landfill. She has been running this program for the past decade in Kincardine, taking care of the advertising, the execution, and engaging with her students to help sort the materials. Amanda has also taken on initiatives like collecting old t-shirts and helping students sew them into bags, which were distributed at the Monday Market and Santa Claus Parade in 2019. With a presence at Hometown Christmas, Blues Fest, and other weekend BIA events, Amanda has had booths set up to engage children in making crafts out of recycled materials. She has organized trail and community cleanups in the spring and fall for many years in conjunction with Pitch In Weekend and the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup. Her dedication to initiatives that encourage respect and responsibility for our environment is exceptional. Hi. I'm Linda Kane from Ontario Power Generation and I'm pleased to present the OPG Environmental Award for this year. I would like to recognize all of the nominees recognized to receive this award. Each embrace the importance of a healthy and sustainable environment. At OPG we understand the importance of maintaining a sustainable environment both on and off our facilities throughout the province. It is an honor that I am able to announce the OPG Environmental Award to this year's recipient. My congratulations go to Eden Babbitt.
Hello everyone. It is such an honor to accept this award today. 2020 has been an interesting year for everyone, but we cannot use that as an excuse to not do our part to protect our natural world. I have been working very hard through Eden for our environment over the past year, and I want to say thank you to the people who have supported me along the way. My family, friends, and teachers have always been supportive of my decisions and encouraged me to do my best. I would also like to thank the people who continue to inspire me. Thank you, Dr. Jane Goodall, for opening my eyes to the impacts everyday things have on our natural world and inspiring me to change my ways. Thank you, David Suzuki, the wonderful Greta Thunberg, and countless other environmental activists for blazing the trail ahead of me. And finally, thank you, Dr. Dr. Yulia Badescu for your friendship and support over the past year. You've inspired me to continue on this path. I look forward to a healthier, greener environment for the future. Thank you to the community for this incredible honor. I, can't, I can see the world moving in a more positive direction. Change is happening, proof that when we work together, we can, each of us can be part of the solution. Thank you. Our top three nominees for the Meridian Good Neighbor of the Year Award include Keith Battler, who for the last 31 years has continually helped our community stay connected. He's used his success as one of the top three Royal LePage brokers to give back to Kincartan. Keith has been an integral part of housing development here, having built two condos and one apartment building. And over the past 20 years, he's been a dedicated supporter of the Women's House serving Bruce and Gray. For the last 10, he's been an active coach here in minor hockey and made monetary donations and additional support to disadvantaged families a priority. Keith is a regular donator to the local food bank and has done his absolute best to give back at every turn. Tom Franklin has a master's in biochemistry and began teaching children in Saugeen First Nations. He then taught in Kincardine for a couple of years where he co-founded the Kincardine Robotics Club. He moved to Port Elgin High School, where he is today, teaching chemistry, physics, biology, and other general science classes. For the last 25 years, Tom has coached rugby to youth. Over the last couple, Tom has aligned with Philip Craig of Chalmers Church in Armo, which became a location for our community garden. These gardening days brought experienced farmers and newcomers together to grow food with the intended destination of the food banks in Kincardine and Port Elgin. Tom has been very clear he was only able to accomplish such wonderfully generous acts with the help of volunteers such as Krista Ritchie and his family, whose home and market garden goods were also donated to these food banks. These acts of service and giving unquestionably inspired many other locals to get into their gardens this season too and to give. With his eye on science and soil, Tom has engaged his grade nine science students in soil testing and cover crop experiments with the help of a Jane Goodall grant that he applied for and received. Their goal is to increase the soil carbon annually by 0.4%, which is the World Health Organization's goal. Getting young people interested and engaged in environmental conservation. Tom practices these regenerative soil techniques on his own farm, where he has combined the pasturing of cattle with the conservation of the endangered bobolink. The bobolink is a threatened species with an incredibly long migration that has seen a marked reduction in number due to rotational cropping and urban sprawl. Tom is a wonderful neighbor to have here in our community who is working to keep our people and our environment healthy. Sylvia Lee arrived in Kincardine in 1994. It did not take her long to roll up her sleeves and get active here in our community. In 96, she got involved with W.E. Thompson Home and School and was instrumental in reinstating crossing guards. When W.E. closed, she became the secretary of Huron Heights Home and School Association. And as her children moved into high school, she joined the KDSS Home and School Association, where the motto is, the best for each child. Although her children have long since graduated, Sylvia continues to serve on the Home and School Committee year after year. In 2008, she joined Heritage Kincardine and has chaired this municipal committee for three terms.
Along with other members of this committee, Sylvia is pleased with promoting walker, walking and driving tours of Kincardine and started the historical plaque program and the Heritage Conservation District process. Heritage Kincardin also submits a column entitled Heritage Moment in the Kincardin Independent. Sylvia was instrumental in starting and has served numerous terms on the Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee at the municipality, which advocates for arts, culture and heritage here through networking and promotion. In 2019, Sylvia became the secretary of the Walker House and is co-chair of their capital program. Sylvia has said that volunteering in Kincardine is a real pleasure as there are so many dedicated citizens who have volunteered their time too to make this a better place. Hello, my name is Martin O'Connor. I'm branch manager here at Meridian in Kincardine. Uh, at Meridian, uh, we're committed to providing Canadians with exceptional banking features, services, security and advice so they can get everything they want from their money and their lives. We are Ontario's largest credit union and the second largest in Canada with over 370,000 members. Meridian's dedication to helping Canadians goes beyond banking. Thriving communities are essential to the individual well-being of our members and the overall well-being of Canadians. That's why we invest portions of our profits in financial literacy, local community organizations, environmental initiatives, co-op programs and more. We also match our employees' donations and empower them to get more involved in volunteering. Our employees contributed more than 10,000 volunteer hours in 2019 alone. As a credit union, we put our members' money to work in our local communities, helping Ontarians to save, own their home sooner, and achieve goals like sending a child to school, launching a business, and retiring. We also put our members' money to work by establishing partnerships with local community organizations. Meridian has served the Kincardine community for over 35 years, and we're so very proud to continue our wonderful partnership with the Kincardine District and Chamber of Commerce. The Meridian Good Neighbour Award is presented to an individual whose actions help build connections within our community and whose dedication to the betterment of our community is notable and ongoing. The winner of the Meridian Good Neighbour Community Achievement Award is Sylvia Lee. Hi, I'm Sylvia Lee and I was nominated for the Meridian Good Neighbour Award. Since moving here 26 years ago with my husband Dave and our three children, I've been impressed and amazed at the vibrancy of the volunteer movement here in Kincardin. I was soon motivated to join in to help make Kincardine continue to be a wonderful place to live. I started with the Home and School Association at W.E. Thompson School and ended up helping at several different local schools. We did everything from baking cookies to organizing fun fairs to going to the provincial conference to meet with the education minister. The motto of Home and School is the best for each child and that is what we have always tried to strive for. Within a few years, I was invited to join Heritage Kincardin, and I've spent over a decade working on the Heritage Committee. We are very pleased to have made progress with promoting the walking and driving tours, starting the historical plaque program, and also starting the Heritage Conservation District process. In the last couple of years, I have been a member of the Arts Culture Heritage Committee. I was one of a small group that helped to draft the original policy paper to set up this municipal committee, which advocates for local arts, culture, and heritage through networking and promotion. In 2019, I was invited to be a member of the Walker House Board. In addition to being the secretary, I am now co-chair of the Walker House Capital Campaign Committee as we work to raise the $125,000 we need to complete the exterior revitalization of this community landmark. Volunteering in King Carden has been a pleasure. There are so many talented, dedicated citizens who volunteer their time to make King Carden a better place, and I've made many friendships through my association with these wonderful people. I also need to thank municipal staff who go above and beyond to support the efforts of volunteers to improve King Carden. Volunteering in Kincardine has been a highlight for me, and I would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for presenting me with the Good Neighbour Award. Bruce Telecom Young Entrepreneur Award. First nominee, Nadine Vanden Heuvel. 
Nadine Van den Heuvel, founder and CEO of NV Fitness Conditioning Incorporated, elite fitness professional, trainer, speaker, author, and business owner. Nadine Van den Heuvel is the owner of two fitness facilities and is nearing 15 years experience in the health and fitness industry and 12 years of experience of being an entrepreneur. She's trained thousands of people and mentored dozens of trainers throughout her years of owning her fitness facilities. She and her team have helped hundreds of people meet their fitness goals. A business that began in a grass field back in 2008 laid out the groundwork for an ever-evolving business empire. Nadine has been passionate since then to change the way that fitness was viewed and being done in her local community and beyond since that day. Nadine has earned many awards recognizing her accomplishments. She currently employs 14 Rockstar team members known as her Dream Team who serve over 400 members since opening her doors in January 2011. During the pandemic, Nadine created a community initiative to help our community stay healthy and strong while also helping out our local businesses with their Stronger Together 28-day trial. They had to very quickly transition their business within 72 hours to run completely online. While other fitness facilities decided to lay off all their staff and close down, Nadine knew that they needed to be there for their clients and fitness family when they needed them most. Nicole Ireland. Nicole opened up Stellara downtown Kincardine in 2018 and at 23 years old became the youngest stockist of Annie Salone chalk paint worldwide. Nicole is a strong supporter of locally made products and small businesses and immediately carried products from five local artisans and a select few pieces of furniture that she upcycled in the store upon opening. Now a little over two years later, she currently features 32 artisans from Kincardin and the surrounding area and has held countless crafting workshops and become a retailer of Iron Orchid designs. In 2019, Nicole was invited to give a presentation of Annie Sloan chalk paint at the Kincardin Home and Cottage Expo and Bruce County Association Heritage Show. Nicole is a proud supporter of Christopher's Crew for the Kidney Foundation, Movember, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Kincardin and District and the Farley Foundation of Ripley Huron Vet Clinic. During the initial COVID lockdown, Nicole recognized that it would be difficult for parents to keep their children occupied during these trying times. To assist, she made creative workshop kits for children and offered home delivery and curbside pickup. She made over 200 workshop kits and delivered to households from Point Clark to Port Elgin. She also made kindness bath salts using ingredients sourced from local businesses and delivered them anonymously to friends and loved ones on behalf of the customer. For Mother's Day, she partnered with For the Health of It, located in Walkerton, to create wellness kits, which were delivered to mothers throughout the area. COVID-19 resulted in the cancellation of many, if not all, events featuring local artisans. Recognizing the difficulties this created for many, Nicole made an effort to feature more local artisans to give them a venue through which they could retail. Eric Cunliffe Shakti. Eric was born and raised in Kincardine, Ontario. Being called to travel and explore in his youth, Eric's interest in yoga and meditation at the young age of 13 encouraged him to begin to study on Buddhist monasteries and at yoga training centers. Trained in Kripalu tradition and the Tantric Kashmiri Shaivism tradition, Eric began teaching in 2011. He is a 500-hour certified yoga teacher and has continued his education in the array of styles, traditions and methods to best serve his students. Eric teaches with love of movement and meditation, encouraging students to allow their practice to grow off the mat and to take the philosophy of yoga into daily life. Eric's interest in entrepreneurship had evolved from working many unique jobs, including small-scale organic farming, which had a particular impact on his vision. He wanted to answer a call to work towards helping others and specifically to guide them to a state of self-empowerment. This helpful nature is something that has been readily apparent in Eric's character, according to his mother. Since the mere age of two, when she was sure he would dedicate his life to service. Eric Cunliffe began his business in Kincardine in 2011 with personal training, massage training and yoga. After building clientele and reputation, Eric moved into his own standalone location in May of 2019. It is here at Shakti Rhythm that he offers yoga and massage. Prior to COVID, Eric was teaching easily 20 classes a week with steady growth, having partnered with Penetang Gear for Yoga Fest. 
they were able to deliver a beautiful outdoor public session to 65 people per class. With the pandemic pivot, Eric quickly shifted an online delivery platform and he now has over 50 videos in the archives and more than 60 students tuning in. I know Eric feels immense gratitude and feels blessed to serve the community he grew up in. He has taken the knowledge he has gained from traveling to the world to bring back here and serve others. Uh, Bruce Telecom, like many companies, has had to adapt to our changing world and we have done our very best to deal with an increased demand on our networks and uh, operations and staff in order to keep our customers connected to the things that really matter to them. We've also done our best to support our local communities and we've done this through things like providing hot lunches to our frontline workers and uh, running various events for our local food banks and most recently we did set up some outdoor learning centers in various communities that we do provide services for and that was just an uh, opportunity to provide a different way for people to get connected and take advantage of the different learning environments and working from home. Uh, we wanted to provide support any way we could. Bruce Telecom is very proud to be here supporting the Community Achievement Awards and uh, the award that we are presenting tonight is the Young Entrepreneur Award. This is going to an individual under the age of 35 who has shown innovation in business and leadership in the community and the winner is Nadine Vandenhuvel from Fit Body Bootcamp. Thank you so much to the King Carden Chamber and Bruce Telecom for the Young Entrepreneur Award this year, 2020. Wow, 2020 has been an experience as a business owner and um, to almost uh, make 10 years in business is an award in itself. Uh, when I first found out I won this award, I wasn't sure what I was most excited about, the fact that um, I've been uh, nominated um, and won this award, uh, which means uh, just acknowledgement um, by my peers my team here at King Carden Fit Body Bootcamp, as well as the community of King Carden, um, or if someone still thinks I'm young. I'm so thrilled either way um, in taking this award home this evening. Um, you know, this, this business, um, as I mentioned, almost 10 years starting at the age of 24, um, has been an amazing ride. Lots of ups and downs um, being an entrepreneur starting you know just in a the back grass field um, boot camp and our business has evolved and grown and um, you know I just want to really hit home um, that yes this is an amazing opportunity to win and and take home tonight but I hope that this award inspires everyone that watches you know especially young females a young females that are interested in taking that leap into becoming an entrepreneur and uh, you can do it, and um, I'm a true testament to that. Um, just coming into the King Carden area from Goddard, opening a business, and now being able to help hundreds and hundreds of people. So thank you to the King Carden Chamber of Commerce, the community of King Carden, Bruce Telecom, my family, my young uh, daughter, to be inspiring to her, uh, five months old, and also to my amazing team. I couldn't have done it without you guys. So thank you so much. Our top three nominees for the Miller Insurance Agricultural Related Business Award include Greenfield Global, a company founded in 1990, 1988 in Tiverton as Sunroot, an industrial alcohol plant. In 97, after acquisitions, they opened an ethanol plant in Chatham. In 2002, they consolidated ownership with Farmco. In 2006, they acquired Apra Alcohol and Chemical to become the leading manufacturer of packaged alcohols and solvents in the USA. In 07, they opened a plant in Quebec, and in 2008, they opened a plant in Johnstown, Ontario. In 2013, they launched the Greenfield brand, which became global in 2017. From their inception in 88, Greenfield Global has grown from a single plant in Tiverton to a global leader of manufacturing and packaging facilities in the U.S. and Canada 
that reach the entire world. Greenfield's mission is to unlock the potential of people, partnerships, and nature to accelerate sustainable solutions for the health of the planet. They are constantly seizing opportunities to develop new products, processes, and methods to meet the diverse and demanding requirements of their customers. At every plant, for every customer, for every shipment, they put quality first. They operate a tight, transparent supply chain while meeting the highest regulatory standards. Greenfield Global has a commitment to give back to local communities in the U.S. and Canada, and they go beyond the bottom line. They give back to the planet by processing renewable resources into low-carbon fuels and chemicals. It is incredible to, in, to consider that such a powerful company began right here in the municipality of Kincardine and has continued to maintain a presence here to the direct benefit of our community. Eat Local Grey Bruce was founded in 2015 by a small group of farmers who came together to develop a home delivery plan for local products here. The numbers were encouraging, but the farmers were hesitant and justifiably. So in 2015, their idea was put to the test with a one-time order and delivery pilot program. Just over 20 producers sold $23,000 worth of food and delivered it to over 200 homes throughout Grey Bruce using improvised in infrastructure. The feedback was fantastic and encouraged these farmers to move forward and incorporate as a cooperative. Eat Local Grey Bruce delivers healthy, locally grown food directly to the consumer, bridging that gap between farmer and customer with ease. Customers can also access the Ontario, Na Ontario Natural Food Co-op through Eat Local Grey Bruce, and this provides a full range of dairy, veggies, bread, fruit, flowers, and meat. All local products are traceable back to the producers. Orders are fully customizable, have no minimum, and are either delivered to the home or to a group drop-off drop point for our more rural locations. Eat Local Grey Bruce has become an integral part of our agricultural community here in Kincardine. The Kincardine Fall Fair has been active since 1851, an incredible 169 years. The fair's purpose and core principles have not wavered. The fair continues to bring community together and to spread agricultural awareness. It is a wonderful opportunity for farmers to come together for an uncommon but celebratory time to leave the workplace, commune with other farmers, and compare their experiences and showcase the things that they have been working on. Additionally important is the purpose of the fall fair in educating people, both rural and urban. With the increased attraction and retention of city-born constituents, the fair provides an important opportunity for learning. From basic things like why corn might still be standing into fall, to the farm-to-table process and other incredible advances that we have seen in planting machinery and robo-milking parlors as an example. Prior to COVID, the Kincardine Fall Fair had begun increasing their focus on diversity. With their incredible pivot online, this effort is abundantly clear. The spectacular videos shared by the Kincardine Fall Fair demonstrated so many different aspects of farming, from barn, raised animals to pasture-based, organic to conventional. Highlighting the value in all of these different types of farming is incredibly meaningful to a public that has become increasingly removed from agriculture. The Kincardine Fall Fair is always looking for volunteers and anyone with skills to help with something like bookkeeping or social media, anyone with just a little time and a passion for agriculture should consider reaching out to help spread the good word. Good evening. I'm Todd Farrell, the president of Miller Insurance and I'm proud to be here this evening to present the Award for Agricultural Business. This year has presented so many challenges to all industry sectors and agriculture is no exception. Producers had to find new and innovative ways to distribute their product as the COVID shutdown closed the doors on markets that have always been available. We all saw the news stories of milk being dumped and skids of eggs with no place to go. Even local fall fairs that are the highlight of the harvest season were canceled. But farmers are resilient and faced with a new challenge they were the first in line to donate to local food banks so that growing number of people needing help got it. Changes were made swiftly to keep ag workers safe and fall fairs went virtual, opening the eyes of a whole new audience to the amazing farms of Bruce County. At Miller Insurance, we are fortunate that we've been able to keep our staff safe and working. I want to take this opportunity to thank them and our clients for their understanding as we all work together to continue to do business as safely as possible. As we head towards another holiday season, I encourage you to continue to support each other, shop local whenever possible. Our small businesses need you right now more than ever. 
and I'm proud to present the award for Agricultural Business to the Kincardine Fall Fair. Congratulations. I'm Shirley Hartwick and I'm the president of the Kincardine Agricultural Society and I'd like to thank the um, Kincardin Chamber of Commerce and Miller Insurance for this award in recognition to our uh, 2020 virtual fall fair. Uh, I'd also like to thank all the participants that took their time and um, effort to make these videos um, that are also available still to be seen on Facebook, Instagram, our website and YouTube um, and for their time uh, and effort. The local gardeners, the farmers, and uh, market gardeners. I'd like to thank Morgan and her mom, Krista Ritchie, for not only being a huge part of our fair, but also for taking the time to create our Egg in a Bag series that um, brought home a little bit of the fair to the community. But also being participants, Morgan as our interviewer for um, all the series, as well as her mom, Krista, as being one of the showcase um, home gardeners. And I'd also like to thank Tom Church Media and Jason Ehrlich for all of their efforts and without them we wouldn't have been able to put together this video series as well as recreate our website. Um, and I'd also like to put it out there that if anybody would like to volunteer with the fair, we would love to have you. Thank you. Thank you to the Chamber and thank you to Miller Insurance. Hi, I'm Morgan Ritchie, the 2019 to 2021 King Carden Fall Fair Ambassador. I would just like to say a big thank you to everybody that participated in our fair and helped us with being flexible during these troubling times. COVID-19 has brought a lot of changes and we appreciate how um, open people were to our changes and participating in our virtual fall fair. Um, take it from me firsthand that things don't always go the way we've planned, but sometimes really amazing things can come out of that. So we appreciate your flexibility. Community Living Inclusion Award. Chris Napier of Sovies. Chris Napier of Kincardine Sovies has set the bar for inclusion efforts in the workplace. He has participated in summer youth employment by interviewing and hiring youth with disabilities for the summer positions at Sovies. He has advocated for hiring persons with disabilities by attending local jobs work employment events as a panelist and speaking about his experiences to other employers. Chris has hired trained and retained several employees with disabilities, both through our jobs work program and through independent hiring. He has made an effort in his store to support shoppers with sensory sensitivities by providing a sensory shopping experience on Wednesday evenings. Chris has supported youth in high school with disabilities by providing work experiences and helped one youth to graduate by accumulating high school credits for work hours. He strives to find positions within his store that give persons with disabilities the opportunities to showcase their talents and work to the best of their abilities in a supportive environment. It is the greatest hope that the local employers will take note of Chris Napier's inclusive work environment, see the benefits created for the employer and the employee for the entire community. It is so important to set this example to actively see our community members with disabilities employed with their best of their abilities in roles that they can succeed in. And the next nominee is the RBC team. The RBC team led by Courtney Bridge was a huge support for the Night to Celebrate Abil Abilities event last year. Not only did Courtney go out of her way to seek sponsorship dollars to contribute to this event, but she advocated at her workplace and on board a team of volunteers to assist community living in Cardinan District on the night of the event. The RBC team showed up early to set up, welcome guests, assisted throughout the entire night and stayed for cleanup. And at the end of the night, they proudly offered their help again for the next night to celebrate abilities. While the RBC team was assisting a supported individual in the Concarden branch, they realized she wasn't herself and offered to drive her home knowing she had walked to the branch. 
After watching her condition worsen during the drive, they contacted Community Living Concordant District for additional support. After a brief hospital stay, she returned home to thank the team at RBC for going above and beyond for their customer. The staff of RBC Concordant Branch has demonstrated that they support and value individuals of all abilities and have gone above and beyond to make all individuals feel valued, welcomed and included through their customer service advocacy and support. Glennis Vardy. Glennis has been an inclusion advocate within our community raising funds to support Community Living Concordant District and their mission and vision of creating an inclusive community through her annual health and wellness fair. Each year she works tirelessly to prepare the health and wellness fair and donates all proceeds to support the mission of inclusion. She proudly advocates for inclusion during the recruiting process for her health and wellness fair and uses the stage at the event to help spread the message. Glennis has been a dedicated advocate for inclusion through her annual health and wellness fair. Thank you, Glennis. Good evening. My name is Catherine Evans and I am here on behalf of Community Living Concordan and District to present the Inclusion Award. This award is presented to an individual, business or organization that recognizes individuals with a disability can contribute to and fully participate in their community while motivating and inspiring others to embrace the inclusion of all people. So without further ado, the 2020 Community Living Concordan and District Inclusion Award is presented to Chris Napier. Chris Napier from Sobeys here accepting the Community Living Award for Inclusion. We've done a lot of work over the years with uh, Community Living employing some of their clients as well as co-ops through the high school. We welcome these members of the community to our staff and have had a lot of success working with them, growing with them through the years and they have been a great part of our team. We welcome employers around the community to be a part of the Job Works program as well as working with Community Living. All of their clients have a lot of skills that can be used in any business that will further your business and when working with customers that are visiting your business they will add to that experience that you're looking to have your customers experience. The BDO Customer Service Excellence Award nominees are Quinn Florist. Quinn Florist was started in 1947 by Harold and Joyce Quinn, who ran the business for 39 years. During those years, their five children could be seen on any given day, pitching in to help run the family business. The flower shop and nursery was run out of their home until there was an unfortunate fire, causing the current building to be built. In 1986, Harold and Joyce sold the business to their daughter, Susan, and longtime employee, Rick Skinner. Since then, Rick and Susan personally oversaw many occasions for families in this community, such as weddings, birthdays, and we can't forget about Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. While many of us reach out for flowers in times of joy, it bears recognition that many reach out in times of tragedy and loss for floral arrangements for funeral proceedings and celebrations of life. Quinn Florist has exercised genuine care, making these transactions at such a sensitive time one that is supportive and kind. They have delivered more than just flowers to our doorsteps. Together, Susan and Rick offered their customers consistent, reliable service while always striving to ensure that each and every customer was taken care of with thought and a focus on excellence. Quinn Florist is very much a business built on tradition, traditions that include supporting the community at every opportunity, with donations to countless local charities and events, most of all by focusing on the customer. Sadly, our community lost Susan this past year, but we will always remember her smile, her hard work, her devotion to outstanding customer service. For over 70 years, Quinn Florist has served this community and their work is greatly appreciated. Chuck's Huron Harbor. Chuck and Sheila Burrow opened Chuck's Huron Harbor in 1972 under the company name Huron Harbor TV and Appliances Limited. 
In the 1990s, Chuck made a decision to close the retail store and focus on house call service. The philosophy put forth by Chuck was to listen to the customer and do everything they could to resolve their appliance issues. Chuck's daughter, Nicole, purchased the business from her dad and worked side by side with him until his passing in 2012. Over the years, Chuck has supported a variety of local organizations and charities, such as the Women's House, the Rotary Club, Kincardine Skating, and Kincardine Minor Hockey. Chuck himself was a member of the Kincardine District Chamber of Commerce, the BIA, the Knights of Columbus, the Royal Legion, and he was a veteran of the Canadian Armed Forces. COVID has presented challenges for many business, but the demands of appliance repair never stop. Nicole did her best to follow strict sanitation guidelines, wore her mask, and made sure the households of Kincardine were not without their essential appliances. Even with all of these extra challenges and protocols, Nicole has served her clients in a timely and professional manner. Hive and Ho. Anderkin Foods started in 1990 as a hobby for Guy and Gail Anderson and became a commercial operation in 1998, incorporating in 2002. By 2003, it was time to open the store that we know and love today called Hive and Ho. Their focus was on local products, including many varieties of natural honey, honeycomb, pollen, beeswax, candles, and the like. Making it a family affair, everyone plays an active role in the company. Since their inception, they have significantly expanded their number of hives and honey production. They have expanded revenue sources by going into areas such as pollination, nuke and hive sales, queen rearing and sales, and honeycomb production. They are also proud to say that they have won the Premier's Award two years at the Royal Winter Fair for their beeswax and their honey. Over the years, they have proudly supported many local organizations and charities, including local sports and service clubs, the Kincardine Hospital Foundation, and many more. Being an essential business meant that Hive and Ho could stay open during the onset of COVID in Ontario, but in order to get their, their products safely out to the consumer, there were many adjustments that had to be made, and the Anderson family were quick to put that in place. The storefront on Kincardine Avenue saw limited hours of operation. Being in the supply chain for grocery stores, there was an increase in orders to be filled and delivered, so they set up a self-serve option outside the store and began making town deliveries. Telephone and email orders were taken and available for curbside pickup. The Anderson family could tell you that making customer service a priority and paying attention to the customer's needs is mainly responsible for their growth and duration as a business. Good evening, my name is Sarah Pollock and I'm a partner at the BDO Canada office here in King Carden. At BDO, our mission is people helping people achieve their dreams. As a result, we strive to deliver exceptional client service. To celebrate and acknowledge other businesses who share our values, we are proud to sponsor the Customer Service Excellence Award. This award is presented to a business that has shown an extraordinary commitment to customer service and care. And this year's winner of the BDO Customer Service Award is Quinn Florist. On behalf of uh, Quinn Florist, we're very honored to uh, accept this award. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all our loyal customers, which this would never have happened without them and a special thanks to the team at Quinn Florist for all their hard work and dedication being able for us to receive this award. <laughs>
walking up the staircase by the lighthouse to watch the sunset, or taking your children to play at the Davidson Centre Park on, and on warmer days at the splash pad. The Concardens Lions Club has also built our famous beach boardwalk, the band shelter at Victoria Park, which is surrounded by people every Saturday night, tourists and locals alike. Concarden Lions are proud to have hosted the District A9 convention eight times and attracted Lions from over 40 clubs to Concarden each time they hosted this event. The Concarden Lions Club also runs several events throughout the year, most notably the charity barbecue during the annual Canada Day celebrations. They are sponsors of the Penetangor Pipe Band, Concarden Concert Band, the Concarden Summer Music Festival, Concarden Gymnastics Club, Concarden Lions Club is heavily invested in our community and aim to create a great atmosphere whenever possible. That's why their membership is so heavily involved in running the Lighthouse Blues Festival and the gathering of the bands, which have been extremely successful events in Concarden. The Concarden Lions Club's contributions to our community have not only made life better for the residents of Concarden, but they have created and supported events as well as built structures that have made Concarden such a great place to come and visit. The next nominee is the Walker House. Francis Paddy Walker arrived in Concarden in 1850 from Sligo, Ireland with his wife Eliza Jane and seven sons. Upon their arrival, they built the Walker House Hotel and provided food, drink and accommodation to travellers and residents. The Walker family owned and operated until 1942 when it was purchased by Marie Garens, who ran it as a summer hotel and later as a boarding house. Unfortunately, in 1995, the Walker House caught fire and was left empty and desolate for three years. But in 1998, a group of citizens banded together to form the Patty Walker Heritage Society, a non-profit organization that ensures Concarden's oldest building and the oldest wooden hotel in Bruce and Gray counties is preserved to link us with the past and tell Concarden's stories. Ten years and countless volunteer hours later, the building was restored and became the Walker House Museum and Cultural Center. The Walker House continues to be a local museum and hotspot for anyone wanting to learn about Concarden's heritage. They typically run pub nights and lo with local bands and host local cultural events such as Irish Country Dancing and World Fiddle Day. Unfortunately, COVID has presented many challenges for the Walker House as they have been unable to run most of their usual activities and fundraisers. However, this presented the Walker House's summer students with an opportunity to think outside the box by targeting a new audience through their Facebook page. They were able to post virtual tours and even posted unique cooking lessons in their vintage kitchen. They also curated and developed an Indigenous display that will hopefully be able to debut this spring. Recently, they partnered with the Municipality of Concarden to celebrate the Marine Heritage Festival with tourists and locals in the Harbour area. They also now partnered with the Industry Room Tavern on weekends and they continue Patty Walker's tradition of providing hospitality to tourists and locals alike. Inn at the Harbour, Dan and Jennifer Showalter. The Inn at the Harbour has evolved to become an incredible asset to tourism here in Kincardine under the guidance of Dan and Jenny Showalter, whose influence in history here in Kincardine has laid the foundation for great success. In 1978, Dan and Jenny purchased Malcolm House and they operated as a B&B and rooming house. They sold the property in 1987 and guided the construction and renovation as it became a long-term care facility under new ownership. In 1989, Dan and Jenny built the Governor's Inn and in 1997, they joined Best Western Hotel chain. In 1998, they added a banquet room to Governor's Inn and a third floor of guest rooms, making it a 59-room inn. They sold this business in 2004. In 2005, the pair partnered to build a 90-room Best Western Hotel in Orangeville. Not once to rest, in the same year they restored the historic McTavish building on Harbour Street, where Artemis and Abacus hold tenancy, along with upstairs apartments. In 2008, Dan and Jennifer purchased the Harbour Motor Inn and the former Gordon's Pharmacy, now Accents, and began to renovate both. In 2010, they purchased the Chandlery building beside the Erie Bell and renovated it to include a lobby, suites and nine hotel rooms. Additionally, at this time, they rebranded the Harbour Motor Inn and to the Inn at the Harbour. In 2012, development at the Inn of the Harbour really began to shift into something special when a third and fourth floor of rooms were added. The ongoing renovations 
to this location have turned the inn at the harbour into a, a true gem. They are now operating as one of the few locally owned hotels in the area and are consistently ranked number one on TripAdvisor. There is truly no better location from which to enjoy the amenities that Concordon has to offer with their proximity to the lake and the downtown core. The Showalter's significant efforts in developing the land around the inn at the harbour have unquestionably enhanced this special space and truly put Kincardine on the map as a tourism destination. The Showalters return this good grace to the community through the sponsorship of a number of events such as Scottish Festival, Blue Water Summer Playhouse, the Blues Festival and various clubs and other initiatives. They have served on the Town Tourism Committee, helped with Committee for Work for our Boardwalk, the Airport Committee, Heritage Preservation, the Kinsman Club, and currently sit on the Walker House Board. They have truly exemplified hospitality, experience, leadership, and sustainability here in the municipality of Kincardine. Hello everyone, my name is Ann Eady, and it is an honour for me as Mayor to attend the Chamber of Commerce Awards each year and keep up to date on different ventures of our businesses. Of course, I would sooner see everyone in person, but virtual celebrations are necessary in these COVID times. Lately, I had the opportunity to accompany Tori Matichuk from Bruce County on a quick tour of about 20 local businesses who had received grants from the county. Bruce County added extra funds to its regular grants for businesses this year to help businesses cope with all the changes. So in March and April, when I was talking to businesses, I received the feedback, how are we going to cope? How are we going to survive? Um, it was a tense time. Thankfully, most of our businesses in the area showed incredible resiliency in finding new ways to keep their business going. The N-word became pivot. There was even a pivot grant. When visiting with these business owners lately, I even detected some enthusiasm about some of the new aspects of their businesses they had implemented this year. So for us as residents in the municipality of King Cardinan area, local is no longer just a nice thing to do. Uh, buying local is essential for our businesses to weather this COVID storm and be there for us afterwards. It is now my privilege to present the Municipality of King Cardin Tourist, Tourism Award to a group, business or organization that has exemplified hospitality, experience and sustainability in the municipality. So the 2020 Municipality of King Cardin Tourism Award goes to In at the Harbour. Congratulations. Right, well, this is a, a real honor, uh, unexpected. And uh, we uh, just like to acknowledge a few people um, that's helped us over the years. Uh, our family, for one, uh, we're a family business and uh, we're now three of us uh, in, involved in, the, in our business. Um, we have uh, just a great bunch of staff uh, and uh, they've helped us through this year with uh, uh, sort of trying times. Um, we have um, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the town and and for, and the award they've they've given, and the town has been very supportive of, of us, and and uh, the the people in King Carden have been great through the years in in supporting our business, our various businesses. Um, our our friends, uh, our the, who else? Do we say? Our friends, I, I just particularly want to say um, the, the local people, uh, the, the business people, uh, they always send us uh, business, like especially all summer, all year round. Um, a big thank you to them. And, uh, um, and our customers. Our, our customers. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bruce <clears throat> Power is amazing. They send us a lot of business. Uh, so we have. Uh, a, you know, a lot of companies, Kinetrix, Superheats Local as well. Um, and uh, it's been more and more difficult, uh, particularly uh, with uh, the large chain hotels being built on the, on the highway. 
and uh, but <laughs> we seem to be holding our own uh, this summer. Like Dan was saying, is very trying. Um, we've had uh, like an explosion of clients when it came the end of June, uh, July, and August. Uh, we superseded our sales from last year. Uh, uh, also September and October was also really great. So uh, pandemic did affect us March, April, May and June, but uh, we're not coming out so badly uh, after all. So hopefully we stay strong till the end of the year. Um, future developments. Uh, well, we believe in King Carden and, uh, and sure do. Uh, everything we have is in King Carden. And, uh, and we, uh, um, Stay tuned because we're not we're not finished yet. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, and uh, again, um, uh, from the bottom of my heart, particularly uh, both of us, uh, we just want to thank uh, our staff uh, for coming into work every day. And there's not one of our staff members that wanted the time off uh, during this pandemic, and that they just. Um, it was tight because uh, we were short because people were not applying for jobs this summer uh, and uh, but they worked hard and uh, they pulled us through through this summer so that cannot go unmentioned so so they are all part of this as well thank you Our first nominee for the Super Heat Business Person of the Year Award were Brad and Jenny Showalter, whose information has been covered under our Municipality of Kincardine Tourism Award. Brad Thomas from Lake Huron Rod and Gun is one of our nominees for Super Heat's Business Person of the Year. In 1976, Brad's parents, Brian and Ruth, purchased the grocery store and dry goods business in Underwood from Russell and Dorothy Howe. In the beginning, they named it Roos Village Market and then Vallejo Market Guns. Many of their customers were on credit and would pay bills with either money or butchered livestock. In their first year, they introduced firearms and hunting equipment, slowly eliminating the dry goods. By 83, Kincardine and Port Elgin both had large grocery stores, so the decision was made to stick with hunting and fishing. In 1986, Brad returned home from the military and partnered up with his father in business to change the name of the business to Lake Huron Rod and Gun. This business put Underwood on the map as people started traveling from all over Ontario for their excellent customer service and advice. Lake Huron Rod and Gun always put the customer first and took the time to evaluate their needs before recommending products. Questions could be answered in all areas, from hunting or fishing to firearms, ammunition, or reloading. Lake Huron Rod and Gun was a primary sponsor of the Kincardine District Chamber of Commerce Fishing Derby, and they have donated over $50,000 to Gray Bruce Eat and Learn, which feeds children at various schools across Bruce and Gray, and they have continued to donate to countless local groups and charities. Over the years, it has been difficult selling firearms in an ever-changing world where laws keep being revised, but Brad was innovative and had grown his business. The climate of 1999 to 2000 saw a dramatic slowdown in sales, but like Huron Rod and Gun, did not change their level of professionalism, their customer service, and even took their business online and became one of the top five retailers in Ontario. For a variety of reasons, in June 2020, Brad made the decision to close the store and retire. After a successful career, we want to thank Brad and his wife Carmen a very happy retirement and thank them for all of their years of service here in our area. The Superheat Business Person of the Year Award nominee for Ash and Tanya Adams of West Shore. West Shore opened their doors in August 2004 and are currently celebrating their 16th year of business. Tanya studied human resources, fashion merchandising and business, and worked predominantly in retail for many years. Her husband, Ash Adams, a firefighter. Together, they began exploring entrepreneurship with a line of motocross gear called Twisted, which they sold locally. 
They were attracted to the Kincardine area because of the proximity to the water, of course, and the close-knit community. When casual dimensions came up for sale where they were selling their twisted gear, Tanya and Ash leapt at the opportunity to create a storefront of their very own. They rebranded as West Shore Clothing and Surf Shop and set out as a fully independent mom and pop brick and mortar store here in Kincardine. The first in Kincardine area to offer sup and surf rentals, Ash and Tanya quickly became leaders in our business community with their innovative thinking and willingness to explore new business modalities. They were one of 10 hosts in the Ontario Surf Sup series and ran multiple events, bringing many tourists from all around Ontario and internationally to their events, including the West Shore Huron Classic, Great Lakes Surf, Com Great Lakes Surf Competition, the Kincardin 7K Trail Run, the Great Lakes Paddle Games, and more. After a devastating fire in 2019, Ash Adams and Tanya Schmaltz rebuilt West Shore. When it came time to reopen, we were just at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Not to be discouraged, they quickly took advantage of digital grants and brought West Shore online with a heartier emphasis on the lifestyle branding. The addition of a kombucha bar and complimentary Canadian products emphasized their passion for non-toxic, healthy choices and really set them apart. Ash and Tanya opened Drifter's Lofts, an Airbnb short-term rental experience above their store. The success of this venture has had a benefit to the entire community. While they have had some local visitors there on staycations, the majority of their visitors are first-timers to Kincardine. This power couple continues to adapt and pivot, demonstrating the strength of character and innovation that is needed to succeed in business. First off, I'd like to thank the Kincardine Chamber of Commerce for having me here today and adapting their traditional banquet ceremony into a digital media event that can be consumed by all in a safe manner. There's a tremendous amount of economic advancement taking place in Kincardine, and we truly want to highlight those achievements. My name is Dylan Sale, Marketing Coordinator here on behalf of Superheat as we present the Business Person of the Year Award. Superheat is a premier industrial on-site heat treatment provider. Heat treatment has become an essential provision during the turnaround and capital work in the oil and energy industry. Heat treatment, also referred to as stress relieving, is the heating and cooling of a component in a controlled manner in order to reach desired molecular structure and physical structure as well. Superheat has an infrastructure of over 30 plus offices sp spread out through North America as well as the United Kingdom with our corporate office residing here in Kincardine. Our smart way approach to on-site heat treatment creates a tremendous amount of value for our clients as we can remotely control and operate all on-site equipment from our Superheat smart centers as well as patch, packaging that in a digital quality assurance program through an app called SmartView. Without further ado, I'm honored to present the 2020 Business Person of the Year Award sponsored by Superheat to Brad Thomas. Congratulations, Brad. My name is Brad Thomas. I'm so fortunate to be able to receive this award today. Um, after 44 years, it is a heavy heart that we are closing down. Um, my age and my needs and, of course, uh, my wife, uh, They've, they paid the price for me working so many years and so I'm going to pay it back by retiring and spending time with my wife and family and doing things that way. And uh, I'm surely going to miss the customers that have been coming in over the years. I've seen generations, I've seen um, grandfathers and you know, their grandsons that come in. So it's a sad time for that and uh, I'm really going to miss it, and, but I'm really going to enjoy my retirement. Thank you. My FM Business of the Year Award. First nominee is Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire truly has achieved their vision of putting customer needs first. Their large store expansion, while precariously timed over the pandemic, was much needed and has served to meet the demands of our growing community. They are now the largest Canadian Tire store in the area, with the largest garden section. They are adding in literally thousands of products to their wide assortment to keep up with customer demands. They have expanded their warehouse to keep more items in stock and added a hunting and fishing pro shop within the store. This also features a firearms department much needed for our local hunting and trapping community. 
Canadian Tire Concarden has recently invested in new automotive shop equipment to keep up with the vast changes in the industry. And they proudly use the Canadian Tire Triangle Rewards Program, one of the best rewards programs in the market today. Canadian Tire Concarden is invested in our community and supports most, if not all, of the nonprofits here, ranging from the Women's House Hospital Auxiliary, Concarden Chamber, the Legion, the Bulldogs, and a whole roster of teams. Canadian Tire was one of the primary sponsors of the Concarden Fishing Derby and prides themselves in on local jumpstart chapter where money raised goes right back into children who need financial support to stay in sports. John Satosik of Canadian Tire Concarden demonstrated an incredible leadership and exemplary customer service during the pandemic. With a strong pivot to pick up for all deliveries, they quickly converted their business model and it was more often than not John himself loading up vehicles while keeping up with protocols in the most uncertain of times. Canadian Tire Concarden quickly installed plexiglass markations and other measures to keep people safe in their store. The next nominee is Sugar Shack. On Valentine's Day of 1999, Scott Duncan established Sugar Shack Tattoo in the unused office space in the back of Kevin Bradley's barbershop, Snip and Clip. Word quickly spread and by the end of that summer, Scott had a small but busy private tattoo studio running and was booked about a month ahead. Curious to see whether he could keep the momentum growing, Scott opted not to leave until the end of that summer, but instead kept Concarden as his home base and began traveling two or three times a year on educational trips to Europe. By 2002, Scott had outgrown the confines of the small office in the barber shop and seized the chance to rent the retail space next door. From there, he ran Sugar Shack Tattoo for the next 11 years with one other artist working by his side. In 2013, Scott finally realized a goal he had been working towards for some time, to own the building he was running the shop out of. January of that year, Scott became the owner of 786 Queen Street, an iconic building built in 1881 in the heart of the downtown core, and its location Sugar Shack still resides in. After a colossal amount of effort on the part of family and friends, a couple local tradesmen, and no small financial investment, the building was renovated top to bottom, purpose built as a bespoke tattoo studio, and opened its doors June 1, 2013. Sugar Shack Tattoo continues to evolve as a business and as a creative space. The artists who choose to work under his roof are afforded the opportunity to develop themselves in cooperation with each other and with our clients who allow us to use our artistic vision to craft custom, one-of-a-kind tattoo art in an environment that is relaxed, comfortable and inspiring. In November of 2019, Scott opened up a new business at 786 Queen Street, running alongside Sugar Shack, seeing the need for more delicious coffee downtown, the daily grind came to be. This little spot has quickly become a town favourite. We look forward to seeing Sugar Shack continue to expand and are thankful for the niche created here that draws tourists and locals alike to downtown Kincardine. And the next nominee is Cooperators. Jennifer Cook and Associates, the Cooperators, are frequent flyers at our Community Achievement Awards. Not only are they a personable, outgoing and congenial team, but they professional, philanthropic and truly in the corner of those they represent. They have earned top agency achievements annually through Cooperators, both regional and executive. They earned the Platinum Wealth Management Award through Cooperators and Jennifer as an aspirant million dollar around table manner. Jennifer sits on the President's Advisory Committee for Cooperators, a table of 12 across Canada. Jennifer earned her Professional Financial Advisor designation this year and is committed to continual education to provide Concarden with the best services possible. The success of Jennifer Cook & Associates has brought Jen to be a key speaker at a variety of events, including one in Malta, putting Concarden on the map. Jennifer and her team have organized the annual beach cleanup initiative, which has gotten our normal seasons off to the incredible start. Jennifer sits on the BIA board of directors and actively pursues the economic development of our downtown. Kelly Dagelman is a big brothers and big sisters board member and is very active with their group. The cooperator sponsors many golf tournaments, are key sponsors of handbags for hospice. 
They support community living, local hockey players, and Bulldogs Junior C, Blues Fest, the Scottish Festival, Legion Trivia, and are a major sponsor of the Women's House Serving Bruce and Gray. Jennifer Cook was one of the key organizers of the Last Concordian Old Boys Reunion, and we were so lucky to have her keen insight and enthusiasm to bring such a special event. Jennifer Cook and Associates, the cooperators, are a long-standing and vital business in our community and represent the potential for success made through building strong relationships through consistent con conscientious practice. Hi, I'm Gore Dugan from the Shorelines My FM, now called the Shorelines Oldies. I'd first off like to uh, thank and congratulate all the businesses and the volunteers and community members who've been awarded this evening during this presentation. I want to thank the volunteers for their many, many hours of uh, dedication to causes, whether it be 100 people who share, big brothers, big sister, whatever, I want to congratulate you all and to the businesses on uh, getting through 2020. Uh, it's my honor to announce this year's winner of the MyFM Business of the Year Award and I'd like to congratulate John Satosik and his many staff at Kincardine Canadian Tire on a job well done. Well, I just want to say thank you to my uh, nominees and uh, really appreciate the uh, Business of the Year Award. Uh, absolutely fantastic, although I'm here to accept the award. Uh, I couldn't do this without our, our great team that we have at our store. Um, you know, we have uh, a great building, beautiful bricks and mortar and awesome product throughout our store, but, but it's the, uh, the people, it's the staff, it's the team that we have within our store that uh, really uh, deserve this award. Couldn't do it without our great staff. You know what, we do, uh, we care about our customers. We, we do talk every day about the importance of our customer and how important our customer is and that, that we must care about our customer. And without our customers, um, there's not much else we, we can do. So again, really appreciate the award, really appreciate all the hard work that our, our team at the store does. nominee for the Law Offices of Andrea Clark Youth Programming and Excellence Award is Jennifer Hunter. Jenny is a shining example of confident composure for our youth here in Kincardine. When her children were younger, Jenny spent a considerable amount of time engaging as a volunteer in their schools, ensuring children had access to the arts and helping catch any youth who were needing that extra boost. She performed in classrooms to engage them and gave magical musical experiences in their academic schedule. With a professional music background, Jenny created the Penetangor Youth Chorale. The group met the United Church and created a vocal ensemble where children were allowed to engage to the extent that they wished. Some with impressive solos, others joining in the choir. This personalized pedagogy shines through Jenny's other musical teachings, which have been accessible to students through local schools as well as during her private lessons. This summer, Jenny was an integral part of the local Black Lives Matter walk. Her support and guiding presence ensured this event was respectful and effective. There was a common theme in the nominations received for Jenny that her character inspires others, especially youth, to make better choices, to self-direct, and to strive for community betterment. Jenny continues to engage with local leadership in our business community and municipality to ensure our constituents are doing the best that they can to model responsible and inclusive behavior. She has spoken out about her own experiences and her children's experiences with racism here in Kincardine, pushing us to consider our own behavior and not accept ignorance socially in school or in the workplace. Jenny's moral compass has an undeniable gravity that we are lucky to have among us. Dave Palmer is known as a man who makes sure every kid is included. Whether it's school sports teams or other extracurriculars, Dave coaches and assists at every possible opportunity. Hockey, soccer, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, karate, he is committed to helping provide safe spaces for kids to learn and grow here in Kincardine. Being a calm and consistent presence, these kids reach out to him regularly for advice from hunting and fishing to careers and life choices. 
Dave's passion is hunting, fishing, and the outdoors. He regularly solicits organizations to come to our area for local events, emphasizing the outdoors. He has taught at the Canadian Sportswomen Society event and Delta Youth Camps. Dave began making calls to ensure that any youth who wants to hunt with a call can completely free. Many youth have called him on the phone afterwards, having used a call built by hand by him while hunting and are very proud to show off what they have had successes while using it. Dave also donates his calls and outdoor gear to events like the Delta Waterfowl and Ducks Unlimited to ensure that they have youth prizes at their events. He donates to the Listowel, Kingston, Port Elgin events and even started the Ducks Unlimited chapter locally. Dave takes kids whose families don't hunt out for their first hunting adventures and this has led to some youth being the first in their families to have a hunting license. He runs a youth hunt every year on the Waterfowl Heritage Day to get more kids excited about waterfowl hunting and conservation. Dave and his business partner at Punisher Waterfowl have started a bursary program last year to help youth who show a love of the outdoors. This ongoing dedication is what sets Dave's efforts apart and we would like to thank him for taking the time to ensure our youth get unplugged and engaged outside. Our final nominee for the Law Offices of Andrea Clark Youth Programming Award is Jamie Hunsberger. Jamie and his wife moved to Kincardine in 1991. Here in this community, they have raised their family and encouraged their children to be active in sports. Jamie joined the Kincardine Minor Hockey Executive in 2009 and has held the positions of Secretary, Privacy Officer, and is currently the Ontario Minor Hockey Association Town Contact. Jamie is that person around Kincardine Minor Hockey whom many people would not be able to identify because he's never been on a bench or on the ice running a practice and does not appear in the team's annual photos. When he is at a game, one would never take notice of him because of his calm, quiet presence and he does not like to draw attention to himself. But everybody knows his name because of his many contributions over the years. Jamie is that person who all coaches reach out to for clarification on rule changes and game sheet inquiries. He has been an essential part of the operation of local Kincardine minor hockey because of his selfless commitment to the clerical side of the program. He can be found by his family in his office basement a couple of hours every night during hockey season, looking after the administrative details that are necessary for the Kincardine minor hockey operations. Of all minor sports in Canada, minor hockey is the most regulated and thus carries its share of paperwork. Jamie sorts through this and prepares these documents and reports to move up the line to either the WOAA or the OMHA. Jamie has been active in assisting with the return to play initiatives so that minor hockey can resume with COVID to play plans. They have been working with the OMHA and WOAA to plan insurance coverage, participant bubble guidelines, requalification methods for coaches and mandatory COVID training for team staff. Aside from the time he spends with his commitment to minor hockey, Jamie finds time as a volunteer timekeeper at the Kincardine Bulldogs Junior C Hockey Games. He has also devoted a lot of time to town projects which keep our locals active, such as Kincardine Minor Soccer and our beautiful trail system. Good evening, I'm Andrea Clark from the Law Offices of Andrea Clark, located at 278 Lambton Street, Upper Level, Kincardine. This evening, it's with great honour and pride that I have the opportunity to present the Law Offices of Andrea Clark Youth Programming Excellence Award. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. In 2008, myself, my husband and our three young boys moved to Kincardine from the UK. The generosity that we've received from the community has been overwhelming. So when the opportunity came about for me to get involved with the Community Achievement Awards, there was no hesitation at all. In fact, the basis and premise of the law practice in which I built is community involvement and serving our community. Your issues become my problems to resolve. So it's with great honor this evening that I have this opportunity to present the Law Offices of Andrea Clark Youth Programming Excellence Award. This is an award that's presented to a business group or person who has contributed exceptionally to the youth development in an extracurricular environment. And it's with great honor this evening that I can present that to Jamie Huttensberger.
Hi, my name is Jamie Hunsberger, and uh, I'm this year's recipient of the uh, Chamber of Commerce's Youth Programming Excellence Award. I'm one of many people that uh, allow minor hockey opportunities to be available to the youth in the municipality of Kincardine. Uh, Kincardine Minor Hockey has been around and incorporated since 1987, uh, and it remains true to its purpose uh, other than providing hockey of uh, instilling sportsmanship uh, fair play, proper behavior both on and off the ice to our participants. I started with the association about 20 years ago when my children showed an interest in playing hockey. Uh, since then, the past 11 seasons, I've held a variety of positions on the executive. Although my children have all aged out of minor hockey, somehow I can't figure out how to do that and I'm currently the OMHA town contact. So the association has over 400 members and an annual operating budget of anywhere between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars so gives you an idea of the magnitude and the amount of work involved so we have about 18 people on the executive that all freely give their time so between them and sponsorships from local businesses we provide these opportunities for our youth in our community now one such business uh, is the law offices of andrea clark who provide recognition through awards such as this Youth Programming Excellence Award, and I'm lucky enough to be the recipient of it. So thanks to Andrea and thanks to the Chamber of Commerce. And here's hoping we have hockey in COVID times. The Bruce Power Citizen of the Year Award. The first two nominees of the Bruce Power Citizen of the Year Award are John Satosik, who won the MyFM Business of the Year Award, and Sylvia Lee, who won the Meridian Good Neighbor Award. The other nominee is Rick Clark. Rick is a retired school principal who moved to Concordia in 2005 with his wife Marilyn. Their enthusiasm for blues music immediately introduced them to local residents who shared their passion and together they formed what is known as the Bruce County Blues Society. Presenters of live music and educational blues in the schools program that brings professional musicians into school gyms throughout the region. Both Rick and Marilyn were involved in the Walker House and Rick served as its administrator from 2006 to 2010. In 2010, Rick and Marilyn and the Kirkconnell family started the Lighthouse Blues Festival, with Rick serving as president and music director. The Lighthouse Blues Festival is a highly recognized blues festival drawing fans from across Ontario and Michigan and has been awarded the Top 100 Festival and Event for the last five years. The festival has raised close to $50,000 for the community organizations. This past summer, Rick was appointed to the board of Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Kincardin. Rick and Marilyn also own Rick and Marilyn Blues Productions, presenting live music entertainment in the community. We feel very fortunate that Rick and Marilyn have decided to retire here. Rick began working with the Kincardin BIA in 2011 and has served as its downtown development manager ever since. Rick has dedicated himself to volunteering on a variety of different working groups and committees at a municipal and county level, working very hard to ensure our continued success. Rick doggedly pursues every opportunity to improve our social and economic well-being here in Kincardine, and we are exceptionally lucky to have such a dedicated individual on our team. His lifelong dedication to education, arts, and community development make him an exemplary model of citizenship. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Clark. I'm very pleased to be here on behalf of Bruce Power for the uh, awards and uh, it's been a very different year obviously and I think you know volunteers um, have become even more important as we face the global pandemic locally. Um, our communities simply wouldn't function without the great work that volunteers do and uh, you know we as a company Bruce Power has been doing its part and trying to do its part recognizing the need in the community um, as most of you are aware, we've uh, donated uh, personal protective equipment, um, upwards of two million pieces now locally to our frontline healthcare workers, um, businesses uh, trying to help 
where we can to make sure people are safe and we're doing the same thing on site. Um, we have a large project going on, the largest uh, private sector uh, infrastructure project in Canada that we believe is really going to help our communities get out of this pandemic um, economic recovery wise. We're doing that safely uh, and those two things really do go hand in hand. Um, we've uh, obviously recognized the need in our community. Um, food banks are something uh, we've uh, tried to support recognizing there are people in need out there um, and as we look forward to Christmas um, we're also going to be trying to do our part to help uh, people who uh, are less fortunate and, and that's really what we're celebrating here uh, with the citizen of the year somebody who has dedicated uh, ample time for a various uh, different um, causes in the community and really has um, excelled in that and, and is what you know our communities are all about and it is my pleasure uh, to award this year's citizen of the year award to Rick Clark well, I certainly want to thank the Chamber of Commerce uh, for this, uh, this honor. Um, I'd like to say that I'm going to accept it, though, on behalf of all of the, uh, the good people in King Carden who volunteer their time uh, to make the community better. I mean, whether it's um, uh, groups like the Chamber that uh, are all volunteers or uh, our service clubs, uh, our organizations such as uh, the Hospital Foundation, our, our, our athletic groups. I mean, we're very fortunate, Marilyn and I feel very fortunate to live in a community that encourages volunteerism. It's, it's our greatest asset and it's really why uh, King Carden is strong. So thanks again.